So a very good evening to all of you. I, Akriti Kumari, on behalf of CII, would like to welcome everyone to the webinar of the CII series of webinars on Industry 4.0 for India. The topic for today's session is how to move your manufacturing unit from a cost center to a profit center using Industry 4.0 principles. The session is brought to you by our partner, Amplo Global. I would like to welcome our esteemed panelists for today's session, Mr. Anirban Bhattacharya, founding member, Amplo Global Incorporation. Mr. Bhattacharya has over 19 years of experience in strategy, research, and development, and implementation of physical and digital operations and manufacturing, improving supply chain processes, and enabling process automation services. He has worked at global corporations like IBM, Cape Gemini, KPMG, among others. He has utilized his professional experience to create Amplo Global Incorporation, an artificial intelligence enabled based, enabled industry 4.0 led risk management product company. He studied engineering at the Billa Institute of Technology and Science, India, and, and has an MBA from Fuqua School of Business at Duke University, where he specialized in strategy and marketing. And he currently resides in New Jersey, USA. US. A very warm welcome to all the participants participating today. Before we begin with the session, I would request the participants to post their questions in the Q&A section, and that would be taken up by our panelists one by one at the end. So without further ado, let's begin with today's session. I would request Mr. Bhattacharya to kindly begin the session. Over to you, please, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ashwini. Uh, can you please allow me to share my screen? Thank you. Um, so I will get. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> as uh, as Akriti mentioned, it is um, there is a, there is a, there is an echo coming. Are you can you can you hear me okay? Um, can you hear me okay? Okay. So um, again, um, as as uh, Akriti mentioned, the topic that we have today is uh, really um, looking into the overall uh, manufacturing base and can manufacturing on the table of uh, on the table of discussions rather than just being a talk center, and how how the how the uh, ecosystem is changed also um considering manufacturing at the cost center and um generally when uh, the overall uh, business planning happens of an organization how much they would plan for manufacturing can manufacturing survive without the investment those discussions um are very relevant right now especially post pandemic um, making more resilient uh, manufacturing uh, solution and systems at the same time processes uh, overall integration with uh, human skill management uh, the topic is uh, we are we are found we are finding the topic to be very apt very relevant where um, manufacturing wants to be steady on um, on its own 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 feet and uh, the problem statements when we see on the manufacturing shop floor, even in the supply chain, uh, we don't see much uh, change. Uh, it's uh, the, the change hasn't happened a lot on, on the on the on the problem statements. We are still looking for uh, efficiency. We are still looking for um, high quality production. We are still looking for uh, quality pro products. Uh, we are still looking for um, root cause analysis. Pareto analysis. So, uh, problem statements um, haven't shifted much. What what is shifting is how you would solve it, because your three things, your top line, bottom line, and uh, your work in process, those uh, fundamentals haven't changed. What have changed is how do you uh, absorb the problem and 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 solve it. And one of the areas that we are seeing a lot that where people are solving a manufacturing problem is becoming self-sufficient, self-self-driven, um, self-driven, um, self, 
healing, which are the principles of Industry 4.0, which is um, which is your connected operations, uh, connected experience, connected data, and it, uh, connected products. So uh, taking these principles in mind of Industry 4.0 and really addressing the problems, we 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 will check three areas of uh, manufacturing, which is um, which is your asset, which is your the the shop floor assets, uh, your quality, uh, which is your product process service asset, and also the overall optimization philosophy in the manufacturing. If we take these three as the main driving force for uh, manufacturing, and there can be other other areas too, which uh, may be implicit, I'm not mentioning here. Um, what we are seeing is um, in each of this area, uh, somehow manufacturing is uh, has sought for self um, reliability, self. Uh, uh, self self driven and they're motivated to drive through either um, creating a simple uh, data exchange program which is kind of a soft monetization of the data that a manufacturing persona would have with its tier 2 or tier 3 or tier 1 suppliers and really improving the overall um, uh, supplier collaboration and really affecting the manufacturing timeline or the lead time of the product manufacturing. Um, quality has been a core subject for manufacturing for lifelong. It's it's almost for, I mean, how many years we know it's quality is a big, big topic. And um, one of the areas that uh, manufacturing has done well uh, is in the last 10 years is uh, how do you manage the overall uh, servitization model, quality management model, pre and post manufacturing and sales? How a product in the market can come back, call home, and really give feedback to the product development, product design, manufacturing, so that the next revision, when it comes out, um, it is improved. That's whole servitization advanced civilization for auto concept. Now, what have happened with all this is um, manufacturing has uh, really is seeing, uh, what we are seeing in the industry also is, if we can really focus on um, business efficiency, operations efficiency, it's no doubt it is fundamentally hitting the profit margin bottom line but there is a little bit of a subtlety there which also affects the top line. And that's where I think manufacturing can negotiate better. Manufacturing champions can negotiate better. Now there are two negotiate better and how we would negotiate. Before that, let's talk about some of the fundamental uh, capabilities of manufacturing that we cannot, cannot uh, disregard. We need to make sure that we have a good plan of action here. I will pick a few. Uh, one would be your skills advisory which is very, very important right now. And especially post pandemic where you need social distancing, special distancing, and um, really creating a good um, multi-skilled uh, uh, operational uh, leaders and managers and supervisors, operators, um, as because on a particular day, a, a person would appear who has a single skill set, but he or she knows that the other person cannot come because of social distancing. So he or she has to do the other person's job. How do you manage that skills advisory solution? Those things are coming very relevant. So before even we think uh, us manufacturing here, us means manufacturing as a profit center, um, can be a profit center. And what are the elements of profit center? The foundation capabilities have to be very um, uh, connected. And they will have to be very much embracing certain elements of uh, predictability, analytics. Uh, they're little maybe manufacturing-led analytics or analytics-led manufacturing. Um, and, and at 33 to, I would say 40% of the Indian industries are already doing it. 
So we have to embrace that factor more. So what I'm declaring here is that there's a prereq of those hexagons at the bottom to embrace before we could consider to be on the table of uh, pricing negotiation or sales profitability negotiation or in the sales and operations negotiation um, where you would say that, yes, for the assets that we have in the next three years, I need 5 million. Um, but at the same time, uh, out of this, uh, actually, I would have need more. I would have needed more, but now I need need less because I have a channel for which I am self sufficient. So, for to achieve that, we need the fundamentals, the hexagons, to be in place. So, this is something which is an industry Ford Auto readiness um, concept. Uh, I'm sure a lot of organizations are already embracing this. But something that we are seeing a lot coming in during during this time, especially post pandemic. So, just for, from a level setting perspective, uh, industry Ford Auto has been a concept that I think uh, came from uh, globally from Germany, and we all have embraced it. We are embracing it. Uh, various aspects of B two B value uh, business to business, machine to machine, machine to business. Um, the vertical integration, uh, horizontal integration, all kinds of integrations we are, we are, we are, we are embracing from an industry for our perspective. And if you really see the overall, uh, cognitive change cyber models in the manufacturing industry, just to level set how we are seeing this as a continuous flow of operation. Each of this boxes under the whole digital platform or manufacturing platform, um, they can be self. Uh, driven, they can be a microservice technologically to run uh, its own own journey. Uh, for example, let's say worker safety or deep learning forecasting or logistics optimization or skew skew optimization, uh, spare parts optimization. Any of these, any of these fundamentals uh, can itself be a microservice. So that's also I'm I'm sharing a few technological concept with business concept. So when I'm looking into the overall industry 4.0 led manufacturing readiness, where I can say, okay, I could be a part of the profit center while I'm a cost center and I needed funds from the CXO office to run. Few elements need to be checked off. As I said, the hexagons in the previous, previous section that I was covering. Second is, can each of this group, they're not only connected in the ecosystem, but also have some elements of um, data capability, some elements of data maturity, some elements of um, uh, uh, partner ecosystem uh, integration. So the concept of this whole um, uh, physical, cyber physical model of industry food auto manufacturing, when, when we talk about being on the profit center, this elements need to be embraced uh, a little bit. I'm not saying that if you don't, you can't do it, but it will become easier. And technologically, what also happens is if we take each of these um, boxes and they could run uh, like on its own as an application microservice on a platform, uh, it also helps to uh, run independently self-driving, self-healing, and also be a part of the input and the output. So not only, I'm not saying that it has to be siloed, no, but it has to be like running by its own, as a technologically we call it microservices, so that anytime a VP of operations or an operation leader can come in and plug or unplug that, at the same time when it gets plugged, it should be able to it should be able to be in the overall integrated solution portfolio. So those concepts of microservices, data, um, uh, these are elements of where you are moving towards uh, a profit center uh, negotiated table. You can negotiate, you can negotiate on, uh, excuse me one second. Uh, um, so negotiated, negotiated table. So um, that being said, 
what we will do is we'll we'll uh, look into uh, some of the elements which uh, <clears throat> I have been talking, and uh, uh, we will be able to um, we will be will be able to pick a couple of this uh, topics. In fact, process automation is is common. One thing that we are also seeing a lot of manufacturing uh, organizations are do uh, are getting into is real time twinning. So even before the process. Uh, gets launched or a uh, decision needs to happen, I would twin that. And it is not only a PLM solution anymore. It has gone beyond PLM, product lifecycle management. Um, so uh, it is something that industry has, uh, is embracing. It's, it's of course called digital twinning and how it is also helping the manufacturing um, uh, operations team to create a aura of um, like advanced uh, asset management, people management, supply chain management, less of rework, um, less of uh, like uh, waste, uh, more sustainable solution that's happening. Uh, digital twinning is playing a big role. So as soon as you do these things, it automatically affects your margin. So you're anyhow impacting the bottom line, no doubt about that. But the needle slowly, we are also moving towards impacting the top line and really be a very aggressive or assertive part of the overall business planning for manufacturing side. So, <clears throat> so let's take, uh, take a mind map where there are a few elements of uh, of a uh, few elements of uh, manufacturing where a manufacturing leader when doing an integrated business planning or a sales and operations planning, they are much more, uh, much more independent, much more, I would say, much less demanding on what we need to run the five years of manufacturing. Um, they have a better control of overall equipment efficiency. They have a better control of availability, productivity, quality. By doing any or of the six elements, which you see right now. So the first one is to building the data economy. So when you have your 15 to 16 boxes, which I showed in the previous screen, and they are all uh, integrated flow of the data and the flow of the, the for like flow of the operational data forward and flow of the experience data backward is is crucial data flow data flow and experience flow because once data flow forward your exp experience you get experience feedback that's the reason i'm saying experience data backward so that is how once you gather more and more experience on how you're doing as an organization, um, you have a more uh, better understanding of, can we have a global OEE, overall equipment efficiency? Is it at all possible? Should we have a standardized denominator and numerator for OEE, which is sometimes we have seen it's not possible because the plant features are different. Um, how do I make sure that I develop a comprehensive sales strategy as a part of the IBP, Integrated Business Planning? And all leading to, as I mentioned about the experience flow. So what we are also seeing that manufacturing uh, team members, manufacturing leaders are very proactive. Um, we expect a high demand, uh, pent up demand in second part of this year, H2, uh, calendar H2, hopefully uh, with it is globally, not only uh, in one region of the world, and it will have a ripple effect, positive ripple effect. Um, and one thing that we are seeing as we drive strategy from uh, small to medium to large organizations, uh, persona-led uh, mind share that what's the outcome would look like and the outside in view would look like is becoming a new normal. Everybody, every manufacturing conversation that we are ha having, um, that is so, so crucial, relevant, um, daily, uh, no doubt about that. Um, the other piece we're also seeing on manufacturing uh, profit center mind map is 
when uh, when a leader comes to the table and asks for to remove fat, remove fat from the process, when we do value stream mapping or integration, um, they're all considering terms like daily sales outstanding and daily payables outstanding mind share, which is which is great because now they are feeling integrated with not only within the four walls of manufacturing, but also outside the four walls of manufacturing. And uh, that's something which is very, very uh, interesting because now they are taking more interest in, uh, more, more and more interest in um, the overall, uh, like uh, the money, the, the, the revenue flow or the, or, or the money flow of the organization. So that's where, where, the, where, where the cash is stuck, whereas where we could help to get the cash removed. Um, because according to them, uh, on the manufacturing table is they're controlling the overall manufacturing of the, uh, the, the, the bread and butter of the company, which is the product. So efficiency is a known, is a known uh, new term. Uh, this is generally a cost element. Uh, the other piece which we are also seeing is how a chief technology officer or a chief information officer getting handshaking with manufacturing leaders um, and really uh, looking into much more um, much more um, outsourcing versus insourcing strategy, uh, cloud strategy, and really analyzing the technical debt. What happens, how this is relevant to manufacturing is once you have the overall cloud infrastructure, and you want to be in that in that in that mind share in that and and that shift your uh, integration over value chain the entire value chain the scope is quadrupled because now you can actually work with um, better integration integration solutions um, you have to of course manage the boundaries where you would love to manage your ips and others but how do you redefine that boundary? How much uh, secret you have to share if you want to bring a supplier within your four walls of the manufacturing? Uh, how we have to renegotiate? Those are important. But as we focus on the technical debt analysis and uh, total cost of ownership uh, for the manufacturing operations, we are seeing a lot of this uh, 4G to 5G move programs where uh, where prospects and customers are asking for more, more of this uh, debt analysis. They have machines they have bought in the last 10, 20 years. Each machine is 10 to $15 million. Uh, how, how things would uh, impact um, as they make machine a living object, as they make machine on integrated with the ISO, ISO 95 model or a vertical integration model within the organization as they redefine their boundaries and make suppliers and trading partners coming in. So the overall cloud migration microservices, they're also very much enabling the manufacturing team members to really do much better than they are they were doing yesterday. But these are, I'm not saying these are all like you have, like people haven't embraced, people are doing it in the ecosystem. It is just that this has to be new normal this has to, it's, it's a mind shift change also when we talk about a profit center to a, to a, to a cost center, sorry, from a cost center to a profit center. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a mind shift, uh, a shift of mind where uh, we would be more powerful, more vocal on, uh, on the overall um, company branding, positioning, um, and, and, and the whole line yards. So this is something that uh, important. Um, please let me know if you have any questions, uh, and I would like to answer. Uh, so we'll take one example of uh, uh, of a set, and we will see that how these uh, tenets are built um, into uh, how these tenets are built on uh, this whole. Uh, cost center to profit center move. So one of the elements which has really made a mark, really made a mark is machine being uh, a cognitive element in the industry 4.0 journey. So the machine is now no more 
um, schedule based now the machine is cycle based which means uh, the machine knows when to stop uh, the machine knows when to um, rebel or when the machine knows when to um, when they should be a part of the ecosystem because they carry a lot of data that's the first step. Enabling machine in the ISO 95 model is the first step. Then you would go to edge and manufacturing execution in the, which is the tummy of manufacturing, going up to the enterprise reporting and uh, corporate reporting and factory reporting. All those are there. But if, if we touch the very first one, I'm not even going into any other thing. Just start with the machine. I'm not going into process, uh, design, a product, anything, but the first one is machine, which actually impacts the other three, as I mentioned. How do I see that uh, these tenants are getting built? If you really see this, um, uh, not all assets actually fail at the same time. It's something that that probability and ask for the maintenance fee, asset management being a cost center, or being a vendor for the internal manufacturing customer. So asset group is a vendor for manufacturing operations. Operation is the customer for asset group. If you, if you look into that way, um, the asset group also can run by itself because they actually can, they, what we're seeing in the market is also, and I'm also bringing a point of view. It's not exactly that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to preach here. It's a point of view that we are seeing, uh, we are having, and also we're seeing in the market. So uh, every asset management group is now saying that out of 10 machines, I exactly know on which machine I will spend n number of n number of rupees in the next 10 years or five years. And if I'm not spending on the other machines, what the machine would do and how we would take back to the market. Or, or how do I manage to sell, like manage in that uh, waste, waste or scrap, scrap management, scrap industry. So uh, let's take an example of a financial, how the balance sheet would look like. And uh, generally what we see is the cost of downtime, your cost of manufacturing. You would see the, this is some of the operating expenses cost. If you see the cost of goods sold in the, in the uh, in in your uh, income sheet or the balance sheet, so these are nothing new. What you're seeing, you're seeing this almost every day when you run your business. What is important is how do you interpret this as you have impacted your bottom line always when you do a good business model. Manufacturing always impacts bottom line. So we took a simple calculation of a machine, and what we are seeing is that how a downtime would will uh, like equal to a revenue loss. It's, it's a, again, nothing new, which, what you, what you are doing, you're always doing this in a daily business run that you take, you extrapolate to, you take, you, you take a machine, you take, okay, what's the downtime means for my lack of capacity and then how many products I cannot make. And then if I cannot make that number of units, uh, how it's impacting the sales um, end date, demand due date, how I go back and do an available to promise it's uh, cost and um, revenue discussion all the time. All we are requesting here is how do we see this in a uh, very uh, in, in, in a in a manner where I look into if I focus on innovation, let's pick on innovation, which is generally a top line topic and I'm building the slide I'm not waiting to explain. If you take each of these elements, now manufacturing is helping that whole organization to take that fund and push for new, new development, which we call Blue Ocean, as you all know. And uh, we look into a much more innovative way of doing business. Now, how do I challenge us to be calling us as a profit enabler? Uh, uh, of course we are, because now we are on the innovation table and that's a profit enabler. Uh, once you have an innovation mind share, which means that 
you have better integration internally as an org within the organization. You can integrate outside within the four within the four walls of the organization, outside the four walls of the organization. Um, you will make it more um, more digital, especially in the era of uh, zero distancing or uh, uh, doing a global global ex global and local executions. Um, I think manufacturing has finally come into come into innovation where it has always been an innovation. Don't get me wrong at all. But what we are also seeing as uh, with the prospects and customer bases that uh, we are um, we are we are uh, seeing a lot of um, innovations coming from manufacturing which are being used by let's say let's say customer service or field engineers and uh, maybe mm, customer relationships uh, the whole subitization which is a pretty legacy concept it's not new concept but subitization now has gone into a level where it's completely analytics driven and the overall green supply chain the concept of green supply chain and green manufacturing has finally been established where i can exactly predict where my product is in the field on earth where my product is and i can exactly have a so-called call home feature to know is the product being um, stolen by somebody as being reverse engineered by somebody or no, it's in with my customer or it's in a consolidation point or wherever it is. Um, tracking a product and creating a green supply chain. And I will add another, uh, another jargon to this, um, uh, circularity where I exactly know how much I have deliver it, what I've done, what I have put into the manufacturing to manufacture the product. That product is in the field. It's coming to a life cycle and comes back. Can I reuse that or refurbish it or we scrap it when we scrap it? It should be have a good landfill strategy. This whole element of closed loop manufacturing integrated with the on, on the field is 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 the normal it's not even new normal it's becoming normal so but this has the fundamental to achieve this is all coming from how do i sit on a table with a cfo and talk about this so today's uh, mind share is uh, not to solve uh, any problem that you are having but what i would like to see from uh, well, you may only all doing this is um, really come across. Um, if I may say a little, I don't know. It will be rude to say, but um, equal in the in the organization. And yes, we have been a cost center, but don't consider us anymore as a cost center. So hopefully, um, hopefully, uh, I'm making some sense. I'm sure we'll have questions. Um, I don't want to get into the numbers uh, of insurance depreciation. I mean, these are part of the manufacturing, as you know, but how do we take this and really make sure that we put a profitable angle? So one element that I want to make uh, is what we are seeing heavily. And I think most of all, most of uh, Indian subcontinent is also doing is um, the monetization of the data and monetization means not only hard monetization, soft monetization also. And when we are monetizing those, we are enabling a lot of cross-functional integrations. We are enabling heavy mobility feature in automotive industry. Uh, what we have seen, which is really have embra has embraced industry for auto very robustly. They are now taking larger assignments beyond the, or, or, or beyond the, uh, Beyond the uh, beyond the automotive manufacturing, they are now creating mobile app to capture the last mile. At the end, it's all about um, it's all about that capture of the customer sentiment. So um, uh, I 
I would like to uh, give an, uh, I mean, example of, uh, and I will take some questions. I see some questions coming in. So uh, some of these uh, eliminate eliminations of uh, eliminations of KPIs and focus on outcomes. So how do we create an employee friendly? Uh, generally, we say customer first. We always have seen that saying customer first. Can we say employee first? Of course, there are a lot of organizations already. Most of the organizations that do that. Um, employee first uh, mind share where we really make sure that it's outcome based. And then outcome means uh, it's not that how many products you're manufacturing, but what's the impact on the on the overall revenue so um so some of the elements we have uh, uh seen when we are when we see manufacturing on the table there are six utility levers we are checking productivity which is not only the employee part of productivity i see some questions coming on on that um uh, Customer productivity, uh, making the overall experience simple, managing the risk and making it more fun and environmental friendly readiness. These elements are generally outside in branding. I'm requesting these six levers to bring in manufacturing. And once you bring it to manufacturing, uh, make it, uh, making it an employee friendly uh, environment where Generally, what we have seen, um, an employee comes in, gets a timeline entry done, does exactly what has been produced in the Excel spreadsheet or in a terminal. She or he exactly finishes the job and she logs out. Is it something that you would encourage more or you would encourage um, something around um, having a KRA on customer centricity. You may say that, okay, maybe this month you focus on one element of environmental friendliness. Okay, so how do I manage? Um, maybe I'm just mentioning one carbon abatement strategy rather than giving him or her a, like a, how many products you manufacture and then based on that, you will have bonus or, or commission or yeah. So. So the thing that is important when we look into a 4.0 readiness, employee readiness, employee uh, uh, passion and uh, like passion towards the organization, uh, changing the mindset from a daily run to an exception run is also important. And employee productivity comes into play when an employee sees that the organization is investing in him or her and how. So supposedly, which is running, uh, which can run without, uh, without the involvement of a persona or a person or an employee, uh, take him or her out, um, either reskill, reskill is very important, or uh, focus him or her in a war room concept where you only focus on exceptions, reds and oranges and yellows, and the greens you don't have to worry. Um, and uh, the extra time you have now, you do a better, better stuff for the organization. Maybe you can manage this month uh, um, the innovation board, uh, and uh, from a janitor to the VP. Everybody should document their innovation ideas and just do ranking on some innovations and share with us at the end of the month. By the way, you still have to produce products. I'm not saying that you don't produce products, but empower them with a, some creative mindset. Um, there are a lot of countries, uh, and, and of course, Germany has already established it. Um, I don't know North America is maybe behind Germany, but um, Switzerland has done it. Uh, China has done it a little bit. Um, Japan has Japan has done it. Uh, how do you take an element of daily job and an element of innovative job and club it together and uh, observe the leadership 
quality of that operator. So our employee productivity getting into from a red ocean, red ocean is something which is repeatable, blue ocean is innovation. Uh, how an employee's, because every employee is uh, very, very, uh, very, uh, very innovative. There is no doubt about that. Every employee has something to offer, which uh, in the span of the employee employee relationship, 80% of the time, we don't even know what the employee can offer. So, um, making an environment where you're giving a daily job to run. And you're also pushing him or her to rethink is something which 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 really helps the culture, the organization. And also what we are also seeing is that it's impacting top line a lot. Because now they are not on a pressure cooker to produce 60 units in one hour or seven cars or seven trucks in one month or one quarter. So um, but these are not easy change. It has to come from the top. And that's where your uh, change leadership is extremely important. Uh, it cannot uh, defy the demand due date of the customer. We still have to run the business. But how do you um, really emphasize on that uh, innovative mindset, empowering one big thing to an employee run like a, I call it a Meyer Briggs strategy, Meyer Briggs um, emotion strategy of an employee, do Meyer Briggs for almost every employee to bring this mindset. Because manufacturing is very employee bottoms up thing. It's a, it's a core of the organization. So to put yourself in the mindset of top line and profit center, these are, um, tough and the areas we have picked up, the asset example that I gave is also um, uh, very, uh, very much, um, I mean, the, the area is very much uh, becoming innovative because manufacturing is not alone right now. Supply chain is not alone right now. The whole sustainability piece has come into play. Data has come in, data is very, Data are data plural. Data are very aggressive. Data being being an object now or a persona now. They are in high demand, and data know that they're in high demand. So now they are demanding more, better, better algorithms. Um, so this whole uh, psychology of uh, manufacturing, supply chain, data, uh, sustainability, uh, and then a big push from the CTOs where. CTO is now completely understanding what my IT strategy would be around. So if you take this five big business areas, uh, supply chain manufacturing is one, uh, data, uh, IT, um, sustainability. These all areas, if you see, they are um, uh, experiencing a mind shift. And this whole mind shift is coming when um, me as a manufacturing center wants to be in the marketplace and be at the marketplace. Opening my manufacturing center while we have employees also, if I can create some small uh, crowdsourcing or an application mindset or a, um, open microservice mindset in the manufacturing, enabling us in the marketplace is something that which is extremely crucial and the main message that i'm passing today is how can you be in that marketplace so if you're a construction company can you be be on that field when the construction is happening you be the main contributor and you be the main persona and then you have con other contributors uh chips pebbles cement whatever you need um uh um uh, IoT devices, uh, cranes, trucks, you manage uh, as a main leader, you create a platform, a marketplace to create contributions and cons consumerization of the marketplace. So, so the whole flow, if I summarize now, um, we can take some questions after that, um, is manufacturing being a cost center, 
how do I open up, breathe more freely, enable an employee, innovative employee base, uh, enable a marketplace, uh, embrace those six flashcards that I mentioned, uh, bring a design-led mindset in the ecosystem, uh, much more outcome-based, have sustainability behind the scene, which is very important. Um, automatically, you will feel that your uh, blood A1C is improving, uh, your heart condition is improving, and uh, you're running a more healthy business. So that's all I had. Um, um, I had a couple of slides about us. Um, that's uh, we can we can we can take questions if uh, if at all it comes. But I can open uh, and uh, after that we can we can take some questions. I don't know how I'm doing on time, but uh, we can take some questions. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, I will go back to that six. Uh, yeah, let's stick to this and we'll take some questions. Um, yeah. So, we have uh, the first question from uh, Mr. B.B. Suba, B.B. Suba Rao Adhikari. He's asking that how to increase employee productivity in the manufacturing and what are the different aspects to be focused on? Okay. Uh, uh, I was I was touch basing on that a uh, little bit uh, that how when I talk uh, proudly about manufacturing can move to a profit center, how the employee base can be re can be rethought, excuse me, and can be um, reshaped. So I think the productivity of an employee, of course, there is a target that there is a end demand that you have to meet, but also creating. Um, gamified leadership board not a new concept a lot of people do on the shop floor uh, you have big screens on the shop floor to see the employee of the month um, creating an innovative uh, uh, digital pad uh, reskills uh, monthly checkpoint if it's in either union based or non-union based on how they are reskilled or skilled uh, very, very important. And, um, and I would say that the mantra towards employee productivity is, uh, it's, I will say this loudly, how do you take that pressure away of you have to make this many products, but you actually know that they have to make that products, and at the same time, they feel empowered. And that empowerment will come with, I'm a strong believer of innovation. So uh, empowerment will come with an innovative mindset. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the next question is uh, from Mr. Naren Ragothanam. He's asking, how does Industry 4.0 improve employability? Can existing legacy manufacturing engineers able to upskill by learning or should this course recruit new Industry 4.0 engineers? Oh, good question. Um, so, um, I mean, uh, the Industry 4.0 engineers um, are nothing but the same player who was playing test cricket um, they are now playing T uh, Twenty, and um, some players have declared that listen, I can only play Test. And some players have realized that I will never go back to Test, They're like Test playing. So let's take this analogy on Industry Four Auto. So some organizations and some champions in their organization they have the appetite to take themselves to a more much more uh, speedy, connected, while not compromising on the quality, uh, data-driven, where they can trust the data, uh, mind share. So they have done by themselves. So they don't need to do anything differently. 
some organizations, um, and I have examples and names which I don't want to take, um, but I have seen that uh, unless and until they cut the cord and they say that, um, no, we need to have a complete new look into the T20 format because the players who are playing test cricket, they can't do T20, can't play T20. That also has happened. Like they really took a, took a step back and said, um, from, from this side of the floor, shop floor, all the machines need to be, need to be scrapped. I mean, I'm saying dramatically here, but for that, uh, they partnered with organizations like Honeywell and Fanuc and um, Siemens, who really have made big machines, um, Alan Bradley. Uh, and they have rethought their whole shop floor. That has also happened. Um, who have realized they don't, they, they are late in the game and they don't want to go back to the test cricket. They will only play T20. Um, uh, they are more aggressive, they are more bold, and uh, they may have hired uh, even third party consultants. They have hired uh, external engineers um, to get into uh, that leapfrog jump. That they are, they are the seventh mover, but they want to take the highest market share right now. Yes, that jump, you can't uh, do it by yourself. You have to hire external bodies. But, but the, to answer this question, uh, the mind shift has to be within the organization. It is something that you can transition smoothly. You can't transition smoothly. You have to cut the cord or you have to hire somebody external force to do it. The whole DNA of that player in mind who could play any type of game um, is inside the DNA of the organization. And some organization would say that I don't want to get into Ford Auto. I will stick to 3.5 or 3 because uh, in the next two, three years, my if I run the business, I'm absolutely happy. Some, play, some players would say, no, I don't want to run the business. I want to transform the business, change the business. Then um, again, you have three options. You transition smoothly within the organization, you hire a third party, or you cut the cord and you just start fresh. Uh, partnering with big uh, organizations, uh, Schneider and others, everyone. So I'm seeing that whole ecosystem change where some organizations are doing it, where they are completely starting from starting fresh. Um, also, it is uh, what we are seeing in the industry is um, it is not done alone. As an organization, you cannot do this alone. Unless and until your suppliers or trading partners are also changing, you would not be able to adapt or adopt to this, adapt to this or adopt this. That's also something uh, where some of the industry food auto programs and moving from a cost to a profit center mindset um, these are not happening successfully because I may change, but the other person would not change. So that whole value chain change is extremely, extremely crucial, I would say. So that's, that's, my, that's a mind shift, uh, the value chain, redefining the boundaries. Um, so yeah, hopefully I, I made some sense, uh, three or four person situation that I've defined. But I, I, I would say that don't, um, I mean, if you, if, I mean, you must have a strategy plan and you must have a digital digitization plan uh, for the next five, three to five years. Um, even if you're falling a little behind, that's I think totally fine. It is, it is just that um, uh, even if you're a seventh or a 10th mover, uh, just make sure that you're not, your, your pie is not getting reduced. Once your pie is getting reduced, uh, then there's an issue. So, so that's when you have no point of return. You have to have to get into a food auto journey. So that assessment, that benchmark, you have to do that. That uh, if you don't do benchmark where you stand, you, if you don't do peer benchmarking, then that's a that's a mistake you're doing. So the whole storytelling or the answer to this question could be 
always keep benchmarking yourself every six months. And I think that's something is extremely crucial for the, for the organization. Yeah. Yes, Anirban. one. So the next question, uh, the, the next question is from Mr. Arun Gupta. He's asking is industry 4.0 is only for manufacturing or for service industry too, uh, and other customer related sectors, even software development. Um, yeah, it is for all. And that's a short answer. It's an easy answer actually. So, uh, but, uh, if I, uh, explain that answer, uh, if you really see servitization, the service industry, what has done most of the manufacturing or even high tech manufacturing, heavy equipment, industrial companies, Etech Schneider, anyone, Honeywell, uh, Alan Bradley, uh, Fanuc, um, even John Deere, everybody has uh, seen that shift of um, servitization along with just product development. So some of the organizations we strategize with, uh, they tell us uh, uh, shift our brand from a product to a solutions company. I want to be the number one technology company in the world. And uh, they're actually manufacturers, by the way. Uh, that question when it comes to us, it's, it's surreal. It's, it's very intriguing. It is, it is extremely uh, passionate. So, um, so yeah, it is, um, it is for all industries. It is for, uh, not only for manufacturing, if, even if, if, even if you go and do a service at the top of the tower in, in Airtel or Vodafone, or you do service for a small consumer product or a medical device or a MRI machine. Um, manufacturing has to be connected to the service. Service needs to know that if I shift this setup, how, how the product performance would work. So manufacturing needs to be on the table. So no, industry for auto has to be across the ecosystem, post-sales, pre-sales, post-manufacturing, pre-manufacturing. Um, when you're generating a concept, if it's an IP, intellectual property, even before the product comes to market, you have to be connected. You have to be connected with the entire value chain because A, you can't do in silo, B, you can't share everything. How do you create that conflict resolution chapter? The way you will uh, can create a resolution against that conflict is when you're connected, not only for manufacturing, but for services, for customer relationship, for... So industry 4.0 is not only for manufacturing. In fact, if you really take into the FinTech industry, uh, FinTech industry is a big, uh, big proponent of industry 4.0. And they have a concept called KYC, know your customer. Manufacturing industry in Germany and others, they're also saying KYC now. And why is that? They're saying know your contract, C for contract. It's again a mind map, how FinTech has influenced industry 4.0 part of the world. And now most of the companies are saying KYC, which is know your contract. Because if you know your contract, then you can reduce your lead time because you can bring a supplier in because you know your contract, you know your legalities where you can stop and share, share and stop. So no, industry 4.0 is for everybody. It's not only for manufacturing. And that's where you get a top-down change. Industry 4.0 is a, though it seems like it's bottoms up, uh, that okay, if I do one single spot and check my maturity, you still need to do a top-down overall maturity assessment that, okay, if you really can embrace that level of digitization, if you have a mind share that you're, you're owned by a private equity and you would be acquired in two, three years, it's a different mindset. But if you are a self sustaining organization, of course, everybody has shareholders, but I'm saying, if you're not in the mode of getting acquired, then you should embrace industry 4.0 at every angle, not only manufacturing.
thank you, Nirman. Uh, so we have come to the end of this webinar today, and thank you everyone for your questions. We have lot of lot of questions are coming also right away. So if anyone wants to connect to the panelists, they can write back to me, and we will be very happy to connect to you. Thank you, Nirman, for such an insightful session. It was really, I think, uh, our participants would have gathered some very good information from your side, and. Uh, I, I would also like to thank all the participants for joining today and making this a session a success. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.